Oh my god. It's currently 3.30 in the morning and I just woke up so I could hike two miles up to Muller Mountain to see the sunrise. I'm currently standing in the parking lot of Tumula Mountain. I am the only person here. It is about four in the morning. I have to carry this table and chair up the trail. Let's go. So why do I do this? Well, I quickly want to dispel the idea that hiking is always a pleasant experience. In fact, a lot of the time, it is a rather painful experience. Most of the hikes that I've been on this year have been really challenging and have required a good amount of physical and mental exertion. I often wake up at ungodly early hours to start a hike, and I probably sleep an average of four hours the night before hikes. But I don't do this because it's easy or pleasurable. I do this because hiking alone can change your life. I know because it's changed mine. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the physical challenge and grind of hiking up a mountain for multiple hours. But it's a lot more than just a physical challenge. I think we live in a society that is obsessed with convenience and efficiency. Way too many people want everything to be easy. We want to go on quick diets that will get us shredded without having to put in any work. We want to make millions sitting in our chairs at home. And we want to find the perfect person that we want to marry without becoming the person that they would want to marry. And the thing I like about hiking is that there's no shortcuts. You have to get up there with your own two legs. This is one way that hiking will reframe the way you look at your life if you let it. I live a very comfortable life, full of things that make my life very, very easy. I don't even put in the physical effort of biking around school. I literally have an electric skateboard that does all of the work for me. And what's wrong with that? It may seem like a no-brainer that we should choose the path of least resistance. But I think choosing the easy path isn't always desirable. Most of the big tourist attractions that I've been to where people can just drive up to or where you park your car and you walk a quarter of a mile, those things never really stick with me and they're never the things that I think about when I think about the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Part of it is probably because of a superiority complex I have about hiking, but I think a bigger part of it is that putting in the hard work to see something beautiful transforms the experience of seeing that thing. Knowing that I put in the effort and hours necessary to climb up a mountain makes the views at the top all the more rewarding. Like I promise you that the person who climbs to the top of Machu Picchu versus the person who just takes a bus to the top of Machu Picchu are experiencing two completely different things, even though they are objectively seeing the exact same view. Like I think there's a reason that a lot of religious pilgrimages require walking long distances or traveling a long amount of time and not like a 15 minute bus ride to a giant tourist attraction. There's value in the effort that you put into getting there. And there's value in training yourself to choose the hard path and in learning to appreciate the hard work and effort that it takes to get places. That's something that bleeds into the other parts of your life, which is good because most things worth doing in life require a lot of effort and hard work. And honestly, it becomes addicting. I've grown to love and appreciate the effort and toil of hiking. Uh, like the other day, I was hiking in the North Cascades with a friend, and when we got to the top of the mountain, we were having this discussion about how grateful we were for our health and our bodies that they were able to do something like climbing a mountain. And this reminded me of something I thought about years ago when I tried to get into running in high school. What do you think you would do if someone told you that tomorrow you were going to lose your legs and you would never be able to walk again? I would probably run or walk for 24 hours straight until my legs fell off or until they were bleeding and blistering and I couldn't walk any further, and I would savor every single second of it. When I think about it like that, putting my legs through the ringer and traveling long distances on my own two legs is a form of appreciating my legs. Thinking back on all the distances I've covered and the mountains I've climbed on my own two legs, I can't help but feel immense gratitude and appreciation for my legs. But more than just feelings of gratitude, I feel pride. Simply put, knowing that you can climb to the top of mountains makes you feel better about yourself. One of the hallmarks of low self-esteem or low self-confidence is this feeling that you can't really do anything of value or that you're useless. But it's pretty hard to feel weak or unworthy after you've climbed to the top of a mountain. Standing at the base of a mountain and looking at some far off distant peak and thinking to yourself, I can climb up that, makes you stand up just a little bit taller. Hiking is a really unique physical activity in the sense that it is neither a very high intensity nor physically technical activity. Unlike running where you're constantly pushing yourself to catch that next breath or weightlifting that requires good form and strength, hiking is just fundamentally putting one foot in front of the other. Take a lot of breaks and go as slow as you need. As long as you're careful about the weather and you have enough food and water, hiking is honestly as much mental as it is physical. Trust me, I have gotten calf cramps, blisters, and locked up quads. There have been plenty of physical reasons that I should have stopped a hike, but I've always managed to push through that mental barrier and get to the top and come back down. 
And overcoming that mental challenge is incredibly empowering. I am the most confident I ever feel when I crush a really challenging hike. And I recognize that there's a lot of different things that can make us feel confident and empowered, but I think that there's something special about hiking alone in nature that uniquely holds this potential to change the way that you look at yourself and your life. And it's silence. This is something I've talked about before, but one of the biggest struggles for me last year was finding genuine silence. And this isn't just specific to college. Even on my road trip, without meaning to, there will be days that I wake up and immediately put in headphones and I spend all day either listening to music or podcasts from the moment that I wake up to the moment that I go to sleep. And it is mentally exhausting. And this isn't even to include the days where I wake up and spend all day hanging out with people. We are constantly bombarded by external noise. But when I go on hikes, I put my phone in the side pocket of my bag and I walk for hours in silence. That is an experience that is really rare to come by nowadays, but there's so much to be found in the silence. One of the best tips I've ever gotten for developing self-confidence is to spend a lot of time alone out in nature. And it's a tip I got from a YouTube channel called Healthy Gamer GG. Essentially, when we're out in the world, other people's opinions of us are always shaping how we view ourselves. Our confidence is shaped either by the validation or rejection of other people. At times, that can be really nice because if all the homies are gassing you up, you're gonna feel like you're on cloud nine. But the reverse is that you also will have to accept the criticisms and comparisons that will inevitably come your way. There's always going to be people that you feel inferior to or that you feel are better than you in some way. So you're fighting a losing battle. And if your confidence and self-image is based off of external noise, then it's never really in your own hands. But being alone in nature really allows you to confront yourself and really ask, who am I and what am I made of? If you don't develop the type of confidence that is stable and unwavering in the face of other people's opinions, then you need to give yourself time to remove yourself from other people entirely. When you're walking alone for hours on end, eventually the thoughts that you have about yourself and what you're made of are going to float to the top of your mind and when it's just you in the trail there's no running away from your thoughts you get a really good look at how you see yourself when no one else is around you and that gives you the opportunity to change it and if you can climb a mountain i promise you that you'll begin to see yourself a little bit differently and it's more than just how i see myself a lot of the best realizations about my life what i want out of relationships what i want out of my work and what i want out of this next year are born through the time that i have to myself on hikes and this is an added bonus but i also feel way more creative when i'm on hikes alone i'm able to work through mental blocks that i have for the novel that I'm currently working on and I'm able to think of more YouTube video ideas. That happens because when I go on these hikes alone with my phone tucked away in my bag, I will inevitably get bored. There's only so many hours you can spend appreciating nature before you inevitably get bored. But that's perfect because boredom is the perfect fodder for creativity. I could talk about this for days. Silence gives you so much. You just need to give yourself the opportunity to receive its gifts. Lastly, I don't know how I've gotten so far into this video without talking about the most obvious thing about hiking, which is just being in nature. This feels obvious, but I can not express in words how truly beautiful the world can be and how important it is for our own mental health that we are connected to nature in some way. I'm currently reading a book called Lost Connections by Johan Hari and it talks about social and environmental causes of depression that may not just be chemical imbalances in our brain and literally one of the causes of depression that he writes about in the book is not being connected to nature. I want to approach the experience of nature in two ways. First, the experience of nature by itself when it's just you and nature. And second, how the experience of nature reframes how you see yourself in your life. In the past two months, I have hiked between 80 and 100 miles probably, and I have seen some of the most beautiful things imaginable. I have seen water look blue in ways that I didn't know were possible. I have stood at the top of mountain peaks and gazed out and felt like I was standing on top of the world. I have walked through valleys and ridges that look like they are straight out of one of the Lord of the Ring movies. Don't get me wrong, I understand that I'm in a really privileged position and not everyone will be able to go and see the things that I have, but I promise you that if you can make it out into nature, you will see some of the most beautiful things imaginable. And because nature is so beautiful and vast and ineffable, it does something really interesting for the people that venture out into it. I think it's really easy to get lost in the weeds of life and spend a lot of mental energy worrying about things that won't matter a couple weeks or even a couple days from now. We worry about whether or not a guy or a girl likes us back a grade on a final or midterm or whether or not we made the basketball team. It's really easy to let these things that are realistically quite small cause us a lot of stress and anxiety because they don't feel small. These things often feel monumental. And I think a lot of the times when we're feeling really low we're just really falling down these negative thought spirals about our own insecurities the deficiencies in our life and the mistakes that we've made in the past but being out in nature removes you from your small world and it will make you realize how small you are in the best way possible when you are standing at the top of a mountain and you feel smaller than a grain of sand or you're walking through green meadows that seem to go on forever you're going to realize that there's a lot more to life than your small little corner of it that doesn't diminish anything about your life the people you love or your problems it just gives you a new perspective it 
just takes all of the pressure off your shoulders because it reassures you that you will get through the things that currently feel so monumental to you. Because there is an entire world out there outside of your own personal problems. And sometimes when you're in the thick of it, that's really hard to remember. These last two months that I've been able to hike around the US and Canada have been an absolute dream. And it has genuinely changed the way I look at life. And I hope whoever is watching this hits the trails and gives them a chance to change their life too. Thank you.